All right. Hello, everyone. Should be live now. And I just, there we go. Huh. Very weird. Apparently, I'm live now. I don't know what happened there, but we're live. So we're going to go ahead and get this party started. Thanks so much for joining me, Viola and Sam and Robbie and Lindsay and everyone. Good to see you here. Sorry you didn't get a fancy intro, uh, but let's dive into this, shall we? Uh, you can see right in here, Daily Creative Challenge. What are we doing? We're going to do some double exposure work. And thank you so much for the uh, uh, warm welcome. I skipped the intro just to save time. Hopefully that was all right. But go ahead and download this double ex exposure portrait uh, started, getting started file. I uh, also want to thank everybody who's getting involved in the current challenges. Uh, we've had some awesome submissions uh, come through with past challenges. So I'll review those. I see a number of designs in here. And I just want to thank everybody for getting involved. But let's go ahead and dive into what we're doing now, which is dealing with the double exposure image. Okay, first off, by the way, sometimes this happens. You'll be given an image and you're like, this image is so big. What is the deal? What's going on with it? Right? It's huge. And I maybe want to see everything. And I do this a lot when I do compositing is uh, I just want to show everything on the canvas because guess what? There happens to be multiple layers in here. Uh, so what I will do is go to image and then you can go to reveal all and see everything. So, uh, so reveal all just like that. Ah, that's, there's everything. We can see these various layers, flowers. We're doing a double exposure. We're going to use mountains and we're going to use this image here. Feel free to use your own. We'd love to have you use your own. Uh, as we learned, if you were following on last week, you know, uh, you could just select any layer and in the properties panel, you can say, Hey, you know what? Remove background. Just click right there, remove background and it will remove the background of this woman here, right? Because that's the image we want to use. Okay, turning that off, I have the backgrounds there. I have a gradient fill back there. Uh, I'm actually just going to change this. I actually just want to just change this to white, okay? And uh, again, we talked about gradients last week and we talked about swatches. So I could just grab any color and drop it on that current gradient to change it. So pick a fun gradient, pick a fun color, have some fun with it. She's just initially going to be on white as I start to work on this. Okay. Uh, all right. Hopefully you like these. Oh, good. You like these choices. So mountains right here. What do we want to do? We're going to take these mountains. Double exposure is going to mean, this is typically what it means. It means using layer blend modes. So right over here with my mountains selected, I can go into the blend modes, right? So you get kind of a double exposure. This typically means you're exposing one image over the other. Okay. So we can start to get some cool, um, results as we dive into this uh, this lighten screen color dodge area as well as overlay. It's always going to depend on your images, but kind of go through these. Uh, lighten works because it's on a light background, okay? But I can even dive into overlay, soft light, hard light, uh, get a number of options in here, okay? I'll change this to lighten. I like it, but I can have some fun with this. I can play with how this is going to look on her face, I can rotate it by selecting Command T or con Control T and tilting it a certain direction like so. So Command T if you're on a Mac, Control T if you're on a PC, rotate it, you know, and this is what I have. So within really just a couple moves, we have a double exposure look. There's a thousand things we can do from here, by the way. And again, all that's happening is this is set to lighten mode and it's set over her. Okay, so let's get a little bit more advanced. Good to have Jason Rose here, Alberto and Sergio. I'm gonna have some of my coffee. I don't have a lot of time, but I'm gonna dive into this. We could have a lot of fun with this. So much fun, okay? You ready for this? Are you ready? Are you ready, Alberto? This is so cool. So I want to put, I want to put more stuff on her face, which sounds weird. 
I'm just gonna put lots of stuff on her face. Like I have these beautiful branches, right? I have these flowers as well, okay? First thing I wanna do is extract these um, branches from the white background. Might seem kind of difficult. I'd usually ask you, hey, how would you do this? Well, it comes down to uh, selecting. And what sort of selection mode would you use? What I would typically do in this case, you could do a number of things. Honestly, you could you could use color range. A lot of times something's on a flat color, you can go to color range, select that, see what it does there. I get that little preview right here and it will go through and I can add to it or I can actually click right up here by holding down the option. Clicking right in here. Uh, hitting plus and then clicking right up here and I'm adding to that. So I've sampled colors, I selected okay, and maybe I've grabbed most of that background and I can make a layer mask out of this. And let me just pull this out because we're gonna be dealing with this panel a lot. Pulling this out, come over here, and I can make a layer mask. So channels might work, thank you, Sarah. That's a good way to do it. Color range, oh, I love it. Yeah, awesome. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hold down the option key. And when I hold down the option key and click layer mask, it's gonna uh, extract what is selected, okay? So that's what I used. I went in here, used color range, okay? You could try channels as well if you're confident in um, what the colors are in the background. Another thing you could do just to think of, consider, a, um, let's delete this, consider actually just using a blend mode, because what do I want to do at the end of the day? Well, I want to just keep the dark pixels. So maybe even selecting darken or multiply might work for your purposes, All right? Just like that. I can adjust this a little bit more, get rid of all that white. See, just like that, check this out, done two different ways. This is done without selecting anything. Just change that to darken. We're gonna see some of the background through some of these leaves, but it gets rid of all the white because I have it select, uh, changed to darken. Okay, cool. So I might use both of these. I'll start with this one. I'll take this, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna flip it horizontally because it's gonna follow kind of her hair like so. Bring that over like that. I also have this more complex image. Uh, I hope this looks good, Kita. Thank you for the vote of confidence, right? It's all about like, sort of finding the right images. A lot of times organic images get used for these because they flow nicely with us. We're organic, hey. So if you're doing a double exposure portrait, um, you know, organic uh, type of items seem to work. Uh, this is another thing that I might consider using, okay? I might do this a little bit differently. Let's actually do this. You ready for this? In uh, past creative challenges, of course, I'd show how to mask. And we already did that either. We have this layer mask. And what I can do is I can take this flowers and I can turn this into a clipping mask, right? And clip it so it's just on top of the pixels of this layer beneath it. So that's one way of doing things, right? I can kind of move this around and all that stuff. Um, but what's going to give me even, yes, blend hike, hike, uh, blend if is also awesome. You guys are bringing up some good points, but so this works pretty well, but it only, you know, allows me to deal with like this one layer. I actually want to do something a little bit different. Okay. And since it seems like we have a lot of more advanced people in here, this is another way to do this. So yes, I could do this and I can, uh, command T flip it vertically and have it come from her face like that. But actually what I wanna do is I wanna have a whole folder, a layer group that consists of just this selection, right? So here's my selection and all you need to do is deselect. Hold down the command key and I can click to make this selection. But the key thing is, is I could have this selection. And from there, I can add a folder, otherwise known as a layer group. And this is still her face, right? So there it is. And for this folder, I can add this layer mask, like so. So now what I've done is I've created this nice little folder. So uh, when I have this image, I could put this image in this folder 
and then it's obviously going to mask it out based on that selection. So I could take these mountains as well, like I was doing before, drop them right in there like so, okay? Uh, this works out pretty well, uh, is uh, kind of my thoughts on working with this. And again, if you're just joining me, we're doing a uh, double exposure portrait. So we have a triple exposure because we have three levels of this, right? From there, I can take this face, um, layer group and add to this making this brush a little bit larger but i'm actually adding to it like so okay i'm just adding to this particular layer by painting with white and then maybe removing with black okay just like so that allows me to take this woman image drop it on top right there she is guess what we'll change her blend mode to something like lighten that already looks cooler we can add these branches in like so adjusting the size you get it there it is having that curve around and i can always duplicate this and play with it some more in here cool so that's kind of my plan for this, is to just make a nice collage with a number of elements like I'm doing right now, changing blend modes, seeing which ones work best in this particular scenario. And this is one more thing I'm gonna do because I don't have a lot of time since I had some technical issues. Um, Yes, you can, You gotta love Kyle Webster's brushes. So this is an important thing that happens. This is what happens with most people's um, double exposure uh, portraits that they make, is the colors get kind of crazy and wacky. Uh, this looks pretty good, but it's, it's kind of chaotic still. Okay, so I encourage you to, and this is what a lot of people do, is they'll add another layer that is a black and white layer. So they'll take and remove all of the color. So they'll select black and white. And what it does is it just unifies the whole piece a lot better, okay? Whether you wanna do this or not, it's totally up to you. Another thing to consider, which we'll talk about this week some more, for those of you that are, might be a little bit more advanced, instead of going into, uh, say, adding a black and white filter or adjusting the hue and saturation down, select color lookup. Color lookup is right over here. That's these properties. I'll just put this on top and I can change um, the look of this and it actually keeps a constrained palette uh, for this particular image, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. That's two strip look, three step look. Have fun with it. We could do, go crisp winter, uh, drop blues. That'll remove all the blues and you get the idea. Okay, something kind of like that. This one I'd spend more time on, right? We have a lot going on here. I'd probably get rid of this muddy area. And the great thing about how this is set up, I can always come in here and since this since I'm not doing clipping mask and this is masks and this is kind of on its own thing, I can go ahead and select it, B for brush, paint with black, and kind of remove some of that skin tone down there, and maybe just have her face kind of highlighted up at the top, right up here. Okay, so that's what I'm doing, kind of changing these different blend modes. Even that looks nice, like that. And again, painting, getting rid of some of these other pieces that I don't want because her hair is supposed to be branches. Cool. Yeah, color look up Sam Peterson. Ah, you mean I've taught Sam Peterson something? What? What sort of world are we living in? But look at this. We have all these layers on top of layers. And now I have the opportunity to play with this some more. Let's change the mountains back to normal flowers. Let's go ahead and just keep the darkness from that flowers layer. Okay, cool. You get the idea. Hopefully that makes sense for you. Feel free to play with different color lookup selections as well. Some of these sound kind of horrible. There's a 
What is that horror blue? That's looking all right. Let me show you some other examples really fast as we're winding down, because I would love to see what you guys come up with. Feel free to use an image of yourself, layer on those branches, all those fun graphics, and you could have a blast. You can op I can just open up a couple more of these just to show you some additional examples, and you can see this piece, these pieces are actually done the same way. Cool. Okay, cool. Black and white your style. So this is, this is again, we're looking up one that I've already made. A number of birds added in there. Guess what? We have a folder that's done the same way. And we have uh, apparently just some images of her in there uh, set with different blend modes. Okay, and sure enough, at the top, here's the color lookup. So there's the original, kind of bright. I use this color lookup to make it look a little bit more muted. All right, winding down to the last minute. Uh, this is another one I worked on. And again, this is getting even more advanced. I showed this in a masterclass a while ago, but you could even add video. So think about, um, yeah, going crazy here, basically, is what I was doing. I was just going crazy. Check this out. We'll go ahead and click play. You can see this on my Instagram, by the way. We can click play. We can see that bird, those birds fly away. Okay, super easy to work with. You could see the same process with these folders and the graphics inside of those folders and those folders, otherwise known as groups, have uh, layer masks on them. So thanks so much for watching. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being patient with me with my technical issues. Uh, I really appreciate you. Stay tuned tomorrow. We have more to show off and we're just going to have a super uh, fun week this week and I really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much, everybody. Awesome. I want to see your work soon on Discord. Thanks, everyone.